okay so next what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and do a facet on this so we're gonna do another manipulate uh, geometry we're gonna do oops on the polygon that is we're gonna do a facet and we're gonna do unique points to get all the geometry to be in particular um, points but that actually doesn't really solve our problem and uh, you can actually do this in Illustrator I didn't say that but you can actually do this whole thing in Illustrator if you watch a tutorial that I have called uh, I really can't remember the name <laughs> but uh, I think it's VOPS or something I did you can see how I did that now if I press the S key over here and select uh, faces over here primitives that is or you can press the number 4 it doesn't matter um, you can actually select the face press the T key on the keyboard to actually move anything and if you move this up you can actually see everything is uh, what you call it pretty much separate so that works out to our advantage as of right now so we got that so we're gonna use the sorts up also so we're gonna drop in a sort and uh, in Sandeep's case he did a reverse in our case we are gonna do look at the point numbers um, primitive numbers and what we are gonna do to our particular style to get this all as you can see zero is right here all the numbers are pretty much jumbled up what you wanna do is looking at the x-axis well, that's what we are gonna rearrange primitive wise we are gonna rearrange the x so pretty much all the primitive starts from this side as you can see so it's zero one two and all the smaller numbers are here down going up to the greatest numbers to the very farthest right of the grid or in particular portion left or right of the grid whichever one it is so you can see um oh, where did I go you can see that uh all those are actually just detail like that okay so you got four, three, one, seven, nineteen, all the numbers low, 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 low. So that's how we're gonna actually get our numbers, our primitives to actually drop down. Then he uses a clip. We already done a clip pretty much with the sort, so we don't need that in our instance and that. So we got three nodes and we pretty much created everything that he did over here and set up up to right there. Okie dokie now that we got that set up what we need to do now is actually start the whole thing so we go back to our usual stuff now it's us attribute create we're going to be creating an attribute and the attribute is going to be under the primitive class and the name is going to be anything that you wish uh in my case i'm just name it prim number because that's what we're going to be using and the expression or the value that we're going to put over here is primitive pretty much so pr right there and now if I go to the viewport press the D key I'm gonna enter uh, I don't know where that came from so I delete that I'm gonna enter create an attribute text then I'm gonna edit this so it's gonna be under primitive so it's gonna be viz um, primnum and the name is pretty much gonna be primnum and you wanna make sure you type in the exact same thing as is on the attribute create and you want to say accept and now you can visualize the prim number and it comes up the same as visualizing the number over here so it doesn't uh, the number over here with the primitive number as you can see both of them are the same so 5 5 11 11 don't believe me if I'll come this and edit this I'll change the number to green and say close and uh, accept and visualize this and you can see green green and everything remains the same so we got our attribute as so as same as our primitive numbers and now we got that set up what we want to do since we're going to be using volumes you're going to need uh vol well pretty much we're going to be doing dots you're going to need some volume space in that inside this we could use a poly extrude but it really wouldn't work in our AK, case so we're going to use an extrude and that creates a pretty thick mesh in our case so we're gonna initialize extrusion and it's pretty thick I got a lot of pieces too I should have done fewer pieces just for the tutorial sake but psh, me and my yeah 
<laughs> okay, so we got that potion set up. Now we got a primitive attribute over here called primitive number. Okay, so now what we're gonna try to do is actually group these things by the primitive number. Even though I don't believe it will work, so I'll just do drop in a partition. And what I'm gonna do is it's under primitive, and the rule is gonna be we're gonna name this piece, then you're gonna go on underscore, and now you're gonna put our expression over there, primnum, pretty much, and enter. And now we should have 248 groups, as meaning we have 248 primitives over here. So pretty much the primitive, all the primitives over here on the flat surface that we created is the same number of groups that you got over here. So pretty much you got that many pieces over here inside the partition shop with the same number of uh, stuff. So let's actually finish this thing up by actually putting out a null over here. And we're gonna name the whole thing uh, anything that you want. Okay, now that you named your stuff, whatever you got it named too, I named mine my own way. <laughs> we got that set up, so let's go to DOPS. But before we go to DOPS, let's actually set up the DOPS. So I go to Managers and set a DOP network. And we're gonna name it appropriately. <laughs> So sim and I named it appropriately for the guy appropriately. So let's set up the dops and let's finish this. Okay, so let's go to Dop World and uh this is Dops obviously. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna do is drop in our RPD fractured object and what we're gonna do referencing is the null object we just put out so I'm gonna just go ahead and get that I'm on frame one so everything gets created on frame one and uh, in this particular instance the glue is what we're gonna actually change parameters so we're gonna change the glue strength to zero negative one just means it will never break so I change that to zero and the glue's half-life to zero point zero one something low pretty much because uh, they're gonna be sticking to each other and depending how much force you apply Okay, now I'm gonna right click on this and say help, and uh, this should bring up our help. And well, if you look at the parameters over here and our local variables, you have a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And the kind of stuff that you'll be looking for is anything and anything. But in our particular instance, this is what we're gonna look for object ID. So this is the object identifier for uh, the objects being processed. So in our case, as of right now, we have 248 objects, meaning the 248 groups that we created using the partition shop. So you might want to read this a little bit, but that's what we're going to be using in our particular instance. So, to get this stuff running, we're going to be using groups pretty much, only dynamic groups, because you can really access the data of DOP, uh, PROSOPS, then bring it back in. Well, I haven't really tried, let's just put it like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a group dynamic objects. Then, uh, the group name is going to be fallen or, well, falling because they actually fall in and we're actually going to be using the expression because that's the kind of technique we're going to be using so the expression is going to be um, obj id whose value is equal to or less than some number so less than or equal to 12 let's say so now that we got that set up pretty much now we should have a group called fallen if actually we do so we have one group called falling with 12 objects in it so 12 objects should pretty much be in our group which if we dropped in a gravity force we're gonna tell the group to be selected to be falling right here and we want to remove the asterisk from right there because that means that every single thing gets selected so remove the asterisk and press enter so we have only the group called falling that's going to be uh, affected anything else is not going to be affected so pretty much you have only 12 objects in this particular whole thing that are going to be affected by the gravity while we add it we're going to drop in a drag a drag force 
and the drag is gonna be affecting well falling one more time you might want to check on this some things i never even checked on before i'm just saying and no parameter settings really and that's pretty much it and what i'm gonna set up next is a solver which would be a rbd solver rbd so rigid body solver i've never used that before so i'll just use what i know that tells you i'm not a dope man obviously so i'm gonna go ahead and simulate this it might take a little while because i did a whole lot of objects but it won't take that long but it's gonna take a little while so i'm gonna go ahead and sim it's gonna create all the sdf for the collisions and stuff like that then it's gonna start um dropping the geometry whoever value is less so it's, there we go we got our fast frame move it's gonna be kind of slow and so there you go you got um, our first set of uh, objects falling as you can see 